Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my Wedding Bell series. Today I'm going to be talking about all the different wedding paper options that you have. The first thing I want to talk about is save the dates. This is basically a pre-invitation that you send to your guests to basically let them know that they're invited and you let them know the date and the location so that they can plan ahead. I would say they're pretty essential if you're having a destination wedding because guests typically need a lot more time to prepare for something that's more expensive and farther away. And for that situation, you would send them out about 8 to 12 weeks in advance. For a local wedding, however, it is one of those paper items that you can cut out if you want to cut costs. But if you do choose to go the save the date route, then those can be sent out about 4 to 8 months before the date. One popular option that a lot of people do for save the dates these days is magnets, which is what Peter and I did. I actually designed these myself on PinkMonkey, which I have a video of on my playlist showing you how I designed them. And then I uploaded my design onto Vistaprint and then got them printed on magnets, which are super handy and your guests definitely won't forget when your date is because it'll be staring at them in the face on their fridge every single day. <laughs> your second paper option is, of course, your invitations. Now, the formal invitation should be sent out about 6 to 8 weeks before your wedding date, and this is the piece of paper that actually invites your guests to the wedding and the reception. The info you want to include is the date, the location and address of your ceremony, names of the hosts if your parents or someone else is helping pay for your wedding, if not, you would just have the names of the bride and the groom. You'll have the time of the ceremony and then some kind of little detail at the bottom, either saying reception to follow or dinner and dancing to follow, anything along those lines, just explaining to people that there's a reception coming afterwards. The third paper item I want to talk about is a reception card. There are so many different little inserts that you can include in with your invitations, and this is one of them. This is the insert card that you would include if your ceremony and reception are in different locations, in which case you would include the location, name, and address of the reception, the time of the cocktail hour, and time of dinner, and you can even include a map. If your ceremony and location are both taking place at the same location, then a reception card totally isn't necessary and you can cut it out of your budget. Another insert card that you might consider including in your invitation suite is a travel or accommodation card. If you've chosen to set up any hotel blocks in your area, then this would be a good place to list the hotel that you've set up a block for, the ways in which to contact them, so the name of the location, the email, the phone number, all of that stuff. You also want to include the name that the reservation is made under and the rate that they would get the rooms by. Also, don't forget to include the due date that they need to make a booking by because oftentimes when you make a hotel block they have a deadline for guests to book rooms at that special rate and then they release the rest of the room back to the public. As for travel, if you've made any travel arrangements for your guests such as hiring a shuttle to take them to and from the venue, then this is also a good place to include that information as well. Or if you didn't end up setting a hotel block, you can still include information for various hotels in the area just to make it a little bit easier for guests to find accommodations if they need to. Although Peter and I have set up a hotel block and have arranged a shuttle, we're not including a accommodation card because all of that information will be on our wedding website. Lastly is your RSVP cards. This is probably the second most important piece of paper that you'll want for your invitations, apart from the invitation itself. This is the card that's going to tell you who is coming to your wedding. If you're going the standard route and having guests mail back their RSVPs, then the information you want to include on there is something along the lines of, we have reserved blank seats in your honor. In the blank, you're going to write in how many seats you have saved for them. So if you're inviting a couple, then you're going to write, we have reserved two seats in your honor. And this is because People have had a lot of issues with guests writing in their own number and adding extra guests despite those guests not being invited. You'll also want to leave space for them to write the names of the people that are coming. And if you're having various meal choices, you would also include that information on there so that they can choose which entree they want. Also, if you're going this route, you're going to need to include a pre-stamped and pre-addressed envelope for them to send the RSVP back to you. And this is where it can really add up. Stamps are so expensive, it's absolutely ridiculous. For example, the stamps to mail these magnets save the dates to people ended up being more than the magnets themselves. So because of that, Peter and I are foregoing the traditional RSVP card and instead on the RSVP card, we are going to include our wedding website, which has an online RSVP option, and we're also going to include my cell phone number for those that aren't technologically savvy and aren't able to have access to the website or just don't know how it works, then they can always just call or text me because pretty much everyone has a phone. <laughs> 
Now from here on out, all of the paper products that I'll be talking about are completely optional and you can completely cut them out if you choose and that can really save you a lot of money because a lot of these things aren't really necessary. So one of these things is a menu. It's a nice out of touch, but it's not really necessary. Instead, we're just going to have our menu in the FAQ section on our website. So if people want to know beforehand what the meal will be, then they can go on our website and check it out there. Another mostly unnecessary paper product is ceremony programs. This would typically include the names of the parents of both the bride and groom. It will include the bride and groom's names. It will include the names of everyone in the bridal party and their titles. The name of the officiant and also the order of the ceremony and the various songs or traditions that may accompany each of those stages. Some people may have unity candles or sand ceremonies or any variety of things that make every ceremony unique. And this is where ceremony programs can really come in handy. For non-traditional ceremonies or very religious ceremonies, a lot of guests may not know the exact order of how our ceremony goes or exactly what is happening. So a ceremony program is really good for letting guests know what's happening so they're able to follow along and know what's going on. Also, a fun thing you can do with your ceremony programs is to turn them into fans. So if you're having an outdoor wedding like we are, you could have a two-for-one type deal where there's the information about the ceremony and then basically you just attach it onto a stick of some kind and it's also a fan so they don't get too hot during the ceremony. Another one is a seating chart. People do seating charts in so many different ways. Pinterest is full of ideas. Some people just get them printed out, in which case it would fall under the paper category. So obviously these basically tell guests where they're seated, which table they're at. And there's a couple different ways that you can go about relating this information. One of the ways which I honestly think looks better is to divvy it up by table. So you have table one, table two, table three, and then the names of the individual guests underneath each table. However, the one problem with this is that sometimes it's hard for guests to find their names in that type of layout. And if you have a lot of guests, if they're all crowded around this one board trying to find their name, it's going to get kind of chaotic. So a second option, which is more logical but doesn't look quite as nice, is to just have everyone's names in alphabetical order and then the number of the table they're at next to their name. Lastly, there are registry cards. Registry cards are basically just telling guests where it is that you're registered. Oftentimes, if you go in store to register, then stores will actually provide you with little registry cards that you can send. However, one thing to keep in mind is registry cards should only be sent with the bridal shower invitations. If you're not having a bridal shower, then these likely just wouldn't be sent out at all, and that type of information would just be relayed via word of mouth or on your wedding website. And that's pretty much it for wedding paper. I mean, obviously there's also bridal shower invitations and rehearsal dinner invitations and engagement party invitations and all that kind of stuff, but those are very similar to your wedding invitations, same type of information, so it's pretty self-explanatory from there. So thank you so much for coming and watching my video. I hope you return for more of my wedding bell series. Check out my video where I show you how to design your own invitations or anything you want really using pickmonkey.com and it's really just a lot of fun getting to put just a little bit more of yourself into your wedding paper. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!